Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly then run, if you can't run then walk, if you can't walk then crawl, but whatever you do you have to keep moving forward. What are your life examples of this? After my mom died, I set a single goal to do something productive each day. For a while it was getting out of bed, then it was brushing my hair, then it was cooking something to eat. As each little thing graduated from my thing for the day to just have it, I would add a new thing. It took a while to be functional again. It really did feel like I was crawling when everyone else was running. This is a real tactic and works well. I always tell myself I have to do two things every day. Depending on the day, it could be just getting out of bed and feeding myself. On better days, it's getting some work done and doing dishes. Just committing to two things sounds simple, so it helps keep me to it. And sorry about your mom. I hope you're doing okay and continuing to graduate in doing the things. Exercise. A couple months ago I was crawling. Now I'm walking. Doubt I'll ever be flying. But at least I'm stronger than I was. That is awesome. Not gonna lie I was pretty sedentary in high school. Around 18 I started riding my bicycle every day and after about a year I was riding about a 100 miles a week. This is going to sound stupid to most who haven't been through it but my ex husband of 17 years cheated on me with my best friend. It's all so cliche. We had two preteen boys that he didn't want anything to do with. Somehow I kicked him out of the house, didn't accept his fake apologies, and then watched my run turn into a walk, then a crawl. I dragged us through every day. It happened the last two weeks of school and I still went to their end of the year award programs and smiled even though neighbors were whispering and I hosted birthday parties minus a parent and I taught one to drive. I am not completely sure how I was strong enough but I brought us all forward in those dark days. I wasn't going to let this affect them. And now, even with their dad living 3 miles away with his new family and acting like they don't exist, I crawl, with them on my back. You did the right thing, your neighbors had no right to judge you. My wife died June 2015. I lost my job the same moment she passed because I was her in-home caretaker for 3 years because she was in a persistent vegetative state. I got addicted to methamphetamines again after 22 years of sobriety. My service dog of 10 years died. I survived an attempted murder from two people with rebar and wound up with brain damage and a broken neck. I got evicted because I couldn't afford any more to live in our town home. I walked away from 30 years of memories because I had nowhere to store anything. I spent two and a half years homeless living on the streets and in shelters. And the majority of everything that happens to me happened in six months. I finally got on social security for schizoaffective disorder that I got from using drugs after my wife died. And I finally got a home again back in September. The point is I got through it all because I kept moving forward. My career. I feel like I'm flying now but holy smokes did I start off as a slow crawl though. Graduated high school in 2001. Tried the 4 year university thing. Was really depressed and didn't go to class much because of it. After the first semester dropped out and enlisted. 3 years later I medically discharged. Worked multiple crap jobs while attending CC. Find a somewhat decent job while nearing the completion of my associates. Then the recession happens. Finish my associates while spending a year on unemployment. Unemployment runs out and I decide to hold off on trying to transfer to finish my 4 years degree. Get a job at gas station. Month later promoted to assistant manager. 8 mo later. I'm store manager. Year later leave for a contractor position at a bank doing ATM support. About a year later I am hired on as an employee. 5.5 years later I am in a new salaried role doing data analysis and finishing my degree. This is extremely minor, but I completed a 5k. I'm not a runner. In fact I hate running. I have short legs and small feet. I'm slow and overweight. I did train, albeit not much. I started the race by running until I was out of breath, one stroke two mile in. Then it was intermittent walking and running until the end. I was the second to last person to finish, but I didn't care. It was one of the best highs I've ever had. It felt good to accomplish something I always told myself I would do someday, but never worked up the courage to try. I was proud of myself. I love this. Good for you. Keep after it. 
When I was 22 I lost my leg due to a suicide attempt and becoming an amputee as a result of my own stupid actions was extremely difficult but I decided I was going to keep living and really see what I could do with the time and resources I have. I always thought I was too stupid and ugly to do anything with my life but once there wasn't much left to lose I got my crap together stopped being a victim and now I'm 25 going to school, clean and sober. No friends or girlfriend or family really but I'm content being alone with my thoughts and I think my prosthetic looks pretty badass. I rode my bike across the US, most of it solo, in the middle of Missouri, I just had enough. I stopped on some guy's lawn and just cried. He came out and asked me what was up and I explained how far I'd come, started in San Francisco, and that I was just done. He told me to ride into town, I think Springfield, which was only 10 miles away and take a few days off and rest, which is what I did, because hey, one more day wouldn't matter, and the worst that would happen is that I'd pack it in and go home. Well. A day of rest seemed to be exactly what I needed. I spent a whole day, or most of it, anyway, in blessed air conditioning, ate all the food, drank all the water, and was more or less ready to go again. I took a few more one day breaks between Missouri and Williamsburg, VA which really helped me out. So yeah, one step back, two steps forward. That guy was a blessing. Living TBH. My parents never believed, and still don't. The depression is a real thing, so they never got me help when I was younger. I'm 30 now and still crawling on. A while back I was trying to make a nap. Learning from scratch it was hard to find time around work, friends, girlfriend etc but I had the mantra of if I've only got 10 minutes then do 10 minutes. The actual 10 minutes didn't achieve much but it kept it in my mind and when I had a spare couple of hours, I was in the mindset to do that couple of hours and over the months my project gradually grew and grew. Eventually I got out of the habit and the app got less and less attention so it never got finished. I'm furloughed right now. Maybe it's a good time to get crawling again. When I was quickly dipping into depression again about my relationship with my dad. It was crappy. It was slow to recover. It was painful but I didn't go back without going forward afterwards. The first thing that came to mind was getting sober from drugs and alcohol. This process describes perfectly what I went through. Excellent quote. Being sober sucks for a while. Then your brain rewires to find the joy in life sober. Best decision I made in a long time. Hope your recovery is going well. My entire life. I have some unnamed inflammation issue. I wake up every at a 4, 8 stroke 10 pain level. I've never not been in pain. Been suicidal from it before. But fuck it. I get up. I go to work. Being gluten dairy free helps a lot but sheesh. Some days I shower laying down. Lots of days I don't even have the energy to play video games after work. Not sure if it's spite or what that's keeping me going. But I am still here. And am still going to live my life. Also, invisible disabilities suck. I am 100% with you here. We rock for schooling life while suffering on the down low. I don't know if this has been said before in this post, but there's a phrase that I constantly think of whenever I feel like I can't move forward. An arrow has to go back in order to move forward. Granted, I know this in Spanish and can't remember where I read it, but for whoever needs to read this, it's okay to step back and see where you're at in order to know what you want to aim at. Stay strong fellow redditors. That's a really good quote. I'll definitely remember it. Thanks bud. When I'm feeling really down, or having a blood sugar episode where I can barely get of bed and walk far enough to the bathroom I start saying hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You have killed my father. Prepare to die. Legend. When my heavy wheelchair broke down right before my final architecture school assignment, I asked random strangers to take the freshly printed floor plans to the right classroom. Everyone was running to get their own stuff delivered in time. So I asked people to push me for 10 meters or so. The third guy pushed me all the way through. And the plans got delivered in time. Thank you. Kind strangers. I would hope your profs would have been understanding had you handed in your assignment late. Drawing. After losing everything I ever drew in my life due to a crappy moving company. I was devastated and didn't draw for a few years. Eventually got a whiteboard and said. I'll just do a stupid little doodle once a week. 
then it became once a day, they got more elaborate. Then 5 days ago I picked up a sketchbook and pencil for the first time in years and said, just 10 minutes, a couple of days a week. I've ended up getting lost in it for a couple of hours already, and I can't describe the feeling of joy when I looked at the completed outline and thought, holy crap, it actually looks like the thing I'm drawing. I have barely begun shading but I'm so excited to continue it tomorrow. I was deep in depression for most of a year, no job, no friends, heartbroken. I had a roof over my head thanks to my parents, but nothing else besides. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life and no resources to pursue it if I did. Something like finishing college or traveling the world or pursuing my artistic dreams or having a loving relationship was completely beyond my grasp. But one day I messaged an acquaintance, actually, an ex-girlfriend of a guy I knew, and I asked if she wanted to hang out. Eventually that became a relationship. We got married, I started publishing books, we lived in Europe for a while, etc. None of that was possible from the place I started in, but I dug myself out one small victory at a time. Life keeps changing. I'm divorced but in a much healthier and happier relationship, living far from where I'd ever been. I found another fulfilling career and lots of good friends, and I'll never fall into the place I was again because I have memory of my own success. Once you can recall confidence, you can always use that as the first step to anything else. Overcoming sex addiction. It caused the end of my relationship and all I can do is keep pushing forward. If I stop the momentum I will be stuck at square one in the pit of despair. I will do better every day from here on. When I left my abusive ex-husband, immediately before, he had maxed out my credit cards and spent all of the savings earlier. He prevented me from finishing my BS and from working. I had two toddlers and friends who were kind enough to share time watching the babies so I could work enough to get by. He stalked me and harassed me with threats daily. I also broke a tooth in half, stress grinding, and was hospitalized for a week for what should have been a minor illness. There were at least 5 times I could have easily died that year. I did some work from home and paid off enough of my credit line to charge tuition to it. I honestly thought it would kill me, but I finished a degree and kept my babies alive while well under the poverty line with only some help from friends. Just enough childcare to cover, sometimes not enough and I'd have to call in. It felt impossible. The only thing that got me through was telling myself that I could because I was already doing it, so I could keep on doing it in the belief that eventually it would be better. We got through. I got a degree and a decent job. The kids are well. I bought a house. We've come so far in just a few years. It's amazing. Really. That's great to hear. Couldn't become a vet. Realized too late into my career that this was the career I wanted. And instead I adopted a ton of cats. Volunteer at the zoo and have recently applied to be a foster cat mom. Animals really give me joy. Higher education. If I can't get an A, get a B. If I can't finish a paper at least write 3 stroke 4 of it really well. And if I feel like giving up just do one sentence at a time. So far it's worked. I have one semester left for my bachelors then it's Harvard. Holy crap congratulations. I'm finishing up my bachelors too. We'll get there together. Although I'm not going to Harvard lol frick that but I hope you do really well and feel happy there. The one time I went to a SAR support group at the hospital following my overdose which was a reaction to being raped, the therapist told me this exact quote. I was 18 and not one part of me wanted to be alive, and those few weeks were the hardest of my life, but those words stuck with me. I didn't really get out of bed much once home but after a few days I kept thinking about this and remember quite literally rolling out of bed and basically crawling to the bathroom to shower for the first time in a while. A very literal example but I think of this quote a lot when times are tough. Sometimes you really just have to endure and crawl until you can continue on your path walking. Sometimes it's just the dishes. Gotta just roll up your sleeves and do it, even if you're tired and just want to watch Netflix and become one with the couch. Pulling myself out of a mental health situation. Hearing voices. I had full on conversations every waking moment for about a year then one day I woke up and said screw this. This isn't normal. Got serious about fixing it and I did it. Good job. That's an a thing to overcome. I'm so proud of you. I was once a fully non-functional alcoholic. 
in and out of jail, losing jobs, almost died, the whole nine yards, now I'm a functioning alcoholic, I drink way too much, but I have a stable job, haven't been arrested in over 3 years, building credit, the whole other yard, so I got that going for me, which is nice. My life was completely devastated by sexual violence in my teens. It took a while for it to sink in and for the effects to kick in. I had to drop out of university after nearly 3 years, completely depressed and I gained a ton of weight on medication. I literally went from being a conventionally attractive girl to someone who was very very overweight. Although still in my opinion quite beautiful, I dropped out of university. I had a boyfriend but most of my friends disappeared. I had a breakdown and spent a night in a psych ward. I did everything I could do help myself after that. I got books on the internet that I knew could help me. I went to see a therapist. Twice a week. I got two buses and walked a long way to see the same therapist. I was huge from the meds and felt like such a failure but I just kept on going. I got a part time job which really helped me with my emotion regulation. I saved up money to go and see my boyfriend. During the year I applied for new courses at university. However, in the ultimate act of humility I ended up going to continue the same degree at a much lower class university. I still had a good time. Their people didn't think much of me. I was overweight and still quite emotionally unstable. I was having symptoms from the trauma that affected me in a really bad public way. But I knew I was going somewhere. I kept my head down and ran. Through all the humiliation and some bullying. I did my degree. Even though my concentration was so bad from the trauma that I had to work all night every night and had no social life whatsoever. I went to more therapy. And when it went south. I went to more. I finished that degree seemingly unable to live alone. However I found the subject I was truly passionate about and this motivated me to persevere. Instead of moving and back home, I proceeded to do two master's degrees. And by the way, I continued to have many public and humiliating symptoms and I nearly got kicked out of uni a couple of times cause they didn't like it and refused to understand but I kept on going. Five years after dropping out I have two MSCs. I just landed my first job after 132 applications. I continued to attend therapy throughout the two masters and I am doing do much better. I am still a bit curvy, but really, there are worse things in life, and it's kind of adorable. I wish I had money enough to give you gold. Please take my upvote and most importantly my admiration for your badassery instead. 3 getting sober there were days when all i could do was just take each minute at a time crawling but with time the minute turned to an hour then a day then a couple of days so on and so forth until i was running i began opioid addiction treatment two days before my birthday it's my hardest fought battle but also the greatest gift i ever gave myself i'll be five years clean in three months learning to play guitar wildly discouraging at first with many opportunities to quit for somebody that has never picked up an instrument besides the elementary school recorder i am in the same boat guitar is really hard to learn without knowing any other instrument but it's helping me through everything right now and i could not be more grateful over the last two years i've lost both grandpas a childhood friend an old family friend and a daughter. Her twin was stuck in the NICU for 4 months that started at the beginning of COVID. Only my wife was allowed to see my daughter and I was stuck at home with a 9 year old and a 1 year old. Both on the spectrum. I became so stressed and depressed I put on that COVID weight and pretty much became a sloth. I never had the motivation to get up and do anything. I quit my job. Dropped out of school. Wasn't sleeping. And the cycle of depression continued. Then I got a counselor. I just wanted to talk about the stress of the Niku and the preemie baby. That evolved into seeing a doctor about my weight and potential health issues. Turns out my circadian rhythm is off. My upper jaw is preventing me proper airflow, And I was showing early signs of Hashimoto's. From there I started a new job where I walked a lot. I didn't lose weight but I started to feel better about myself being active. Then I started exercising. 20-30 minutes a day. Now, I walk about 8-10 miles at work, exercise for 45 minutes a day, eat healthy, and generally feel great about life. It's not much but I was at my lowest point this year and the only thing stopping me from killing myself was my wife and kids. 
Now I'm working a great job I enjoy. Lost 16 pounds since Thanksgiving. And my early signs of Hashimoto's have reduced significantly. I'm really proud of myself. Me today. Fighting my depression induced food aversion to actually eat good food today. I managed half a plate of tikka masala and some Nutella pretzels. That's big for me. The most difficult time of my life was 2005. First, I decided I'd had enough serving coffee and signed up for classes to pursue my bachelor's degree. Second, I took a job that I thought would help me improve myself in that career. The job turned out to be the worst job I'd ever had up till that point, with an exploitative boss and unhelpful co-workers. Then my classes were cancelled due to low turnout and I'd have to wait at least 3 months to try again. Distressed, I quit the awful job. Two weeks later, I nearly died from appendicitis. Determined. I signed up for classes again, but this time in another state as the local campus wasn't offering the classes until later in the year. I spent a lot of effort and time figuring out how to make it happen. Then those classes were also cancelled. Depressed. In massive medical debt, and living with my parents, I flung myself to the ground and crawled onward, ending up having to wait for the local campus to start classes later in the year, but I did, and though the coming year would not be very pleasant, either, I ended up graduating and got a good job after. Now, I could mention that the degree was with a tech and I'd end up laid off for bulls reasons in 2008, but hey, that's another story. In March of 2008 I had an aneurysm, killing me. After 3 emergency brain surgeries I was left in a coma for 3 days. This March, it will be 13 years, I am alive. I DK fully, but when I was 25 I wanted to commit suicide and at 33 I'm so thankful I did not. I'm poor, unemployed and feel no real sense of purpose. But based on what I've survived before, I know this is fleeting and I will rise again. Just like every time before. When I was 16 I had just gotten out of an abusive relationship where I was sexually assaulted. Shortly afterwards I met someone who actually treated me decently but I miscarried our child. Then my parents started doing M and my mom lost her job. Shortly after I was robbed and became homeless. Corona happened. Two of my friends attempted suicide. One died and the other didn't because I made it there in time. Through it all I managed to make it to school most days and graduate with college credit. I still don't know what I want to do but I have hope because I worked so hard. I also worked as a busser all throughout my junior and part of my senior year to save money my mom eventually sobered up and the day I graduated we signed a lease on a house. It's still hard. Since I was robbed I still don't have much but it's enough. I'm proud at how far I've come. If you can't run, you walk, and if you can't walk, you crawl, and if you can't do that, you find someone to carry you. Malcolm Reynolds. Better quote for you. Ah I see you are also a Redditor or culture. I had no idea this line was an MLK reference until now. My goal to be more confident in my appearance. I'm slowly learning to love and believe in myself. I'm not there yet but when I get there I'll be living my best life. Depression. Some days you can't do anything, but you just gotta do baby steps. Those baby steps will add up and before you know it, you will be flying. I'd say my current situation is an example of this. My head's been pretty cloudy lately but when it gets bad I remind myself every breath you take is another second you're surviving and that's pretty sexy and absolutely something to be proud of, or something roughly equivalent to that. For about the last 6 months I have everyday contemplated killing myself. I say frick it I'll lay in bed all day and get drunk and die in my sleep. Well, recently I've been getting out of bed and moving around trying to be a functional human being again. And I guess that's something. Finances. I made a few bad decisions when I was single. Nothing all that crazy. Still had stellar credit rating. I was okay by myself. Then I married a woman with a pretty bad track record. Credit in the gutter. Together we had a little mountain of debt. Still trying to figure out this whole marriage thing. Me figuring out this whole having kids thing. I had no kids she has three. I didn't really realize how much having them under me would cost me even with her working. But anywho I got serious about resolving the issue. Life keeps happening. Kids need this or that. But through some good budgeting. Investing in myself, working hard at my job, 
Sticking to my guns not giving up we have slowly gone from crawl stage to walking stage. By the beginning of next year I think we can get to the jogging stage. You sound like a good man. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.